What's up divers? In today's video, we're gonna be going over tips for successful shore diving. So let's get to it. Welcome to our channel, Asul Unlimited, where we teach all things scuba diving. My name is Sarah, and like I said, we're gonna get right into how to successfully shore dive. I've broken this up into three different sections, logistics, dive planning, and safety. Let's break down each one. So shore diving can be really awesome, super cost-effective way to get out into the water, but it can also be a giant pain in the ass if you don't know how to do it. It really depends on your expectations for the day, for the dives, and on your ability to organize yourself and your team. The best benefits of it is that it is super cost effective and it's something that you can do on your time schedule so you can get your team together and do what you guys wanna do. All right, so logistics. We need to know what we're getting ourselves into. Your number one resource is always going to be the internet. So do a quick Google search, check out the different dive sites in your area, and just in general, what is available? What can you see? Then the next really important step is to actually check in with a local dive operator. You wanna find out the tips from people who know the dive sites well. This is gonna be your main resource for knowing what the dive conditions are like right now. While you're at that local dive shop, make sure that you have all of the equipment that you would need. Make a list and share it with your dive buddies. Make sure that all of you guys are fully prepared and no one's gonna forget anything on the day. Speaking from experience, you really don't wanna be scrambling the morning of a dive trying to find a piece of equipment from a dive shop that's not even open yet. Make sure you bring plenty of liquids for the day, lots of water and maybe some hot tea or coffee, especially if you're diving in cold water. You really wanna be hydrated throughout the day. And along with that, you wanna make sure you bring food because nobody likes a hungry scuba diver. Now, transportation. You're gonna wanna make sure that you understand where is the parking lot? How are you going to suit up, walk your kid out, you need to think about those things to make sure that you're not just wearing yourself out. Think through the entire process of arriving, setting up, getting into the water. This is really important for those times that you wanna do drift dives. If you're doing a drift dive while shore diving, you really need to be more organized. So you're gonna to need to have two cars. You'll take both cars to the exit point, the place where you wanna end up. Leave a car there and then take the one car back to the entry point. And when it comes to cars, we all know that we gotta deal with the keys, right? That's one of the most asked questions about shore diving is what do I do with my keys, right? We've gotten to this point where all of our keys are really fancy and they've got you know, electronic parts in it and so you can't get them wet. So a couple of options that you have for your keys, you can hide them, somewhere nearby under a rock or whatever. Not the safest plan, but it does work. Or my favorite option is the hide a key padlock. This you can actually attach to your trailer hitch or one of your car doors. The other option is to actually just get a regular analog key that you can take with you on the dive just in a pocket of your wetsuit or your BCD. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. All right, dive planning. Normally when you're shore diving, you're going as a dive team or dive buddies. So that means that you have to really understand what you guys are going out to do. Things you need to consider. How long do you wanna dive? What will your maximum depth be? What is your turnaround point? You have to make sure that you and your buddies are monitoring your air supply so that you are able to go and then come back using the air in your tank. Trust me, from experience, you do not want to get to a low on air situation and then have to surface swim. Not a good time. And aside from low air, what other things could possibly cause you to cancel your dive? Think about worst case scenarios and how you would communicate that with your dive team. Talking about turnaround point, there are lots of ways to calculate this. A lot of people will take out the reserve and then take the remaining 
remaining amount of air and either divide that by two so you have one half of each of those to do your dive or if you want to be more conservative divide it by three that way if you start the dive with one third you have one third to get back and one third just in case of anything that could go wrong. You always, always, always wanna take your reserve and take that out of the equation. Even when you're doing a really simple shallow dive, you just wanna make sure that you have that safety already put into your dive plan. As for navigation, it's really important that you understand what you're getting yourself into, how to actually find the dive site, then choose the appropriate navigation tech Technique. If you haven't seen our navigation for beginners video, you can check that out in the description below. There you'll learn a couple of techniques like the reciprocal and the square that may come in handy for your shore diving. If you are expecting a slight current, best practice is at the beginning of the dive to go swimming into the current. That way, when you're tired and you need to turn it around, you're gonna be coming back to your starting point with the current, so it's gonna be a lot easier. The last thing you wanna do is fight against a current to get back to your car. Really important here, you want to make sure that you understand the tides. Generally speaking, you'll want to go at slack high tide, okay? That's when the tides reach their maximum and there's the least amount of current, right? Slack means that there's a pause. The reason why slack high tide is so great is because with shore diving, sometimes it can be kind of difficult to find depth. So if you're going in when the water's at its highest, then you're gonna have a little bit more ease. In some places around the world, it's not gonna matter as much. Maybe the tides don't affect current or depth all that much, depending on the topography of where you're diving, but it is something to consider for a lot of places. All right, now we're getting into the really important part, safety. This needs to be a number one priority for you when you're going shore diving with your friends or a buddy, because you don't have the benefit or the safety net of having a professional with you. So you wanna do really simple dives until you get more confidence and more experience in the area. And if you're really just not feeling super confident, then contact a dive professional. Pay somebody to take you out teach you a little bit about diving in the area so that you can safely go into your next shore dive with a little bit more information. Things to consider for safety, your entry and exit points. Maybe the process of getting into the water is easy and accessible, but when you reverse engineer it and you look from the water going out, maybe it's not so approachable. You may not be able to make that exit in the place where you got in the water. This is really important for places where you're climbing over rocks because this can be a serious danger factor. Along with that, you're gonna wanna look and see how are you going to actually get your kit on. We all know that diving equipment weighs a lot. You wanna look from beginning to end and make sure that you can easily execute the dive. Talking about entries, you also want to look at what are you going to be walking over? Some places you're just walking on sand. So maybe if the water is not freezing, just take your warm water diving fins. Other places you're gonna need to walk over rocks and maybe sharp things. So you're gonna want a full sturdy boot. Shore diving can also require some extra equipment. Normally we go diving with an SMB, a surface marker buoy, so that we can let people know that we're underwater and we're diving. This is particularly important for uh, boat traffic, jet skis, anything that's flying around at the surface. Some places actually have required equipment, which is a float with a dive flag. So that means that you need to check in with your local regulations to find out if you need to have a dive flag and stay within a certain perimeter of that dive flag. When going shore diving, you need to be self-sufficient. So that means you should also have the emergency equipment that you need in case there is an accident. You can rent O2 kits. You should always have a first aid kit in the boot of your car and some form of communication, whether it's a cell phone, radio, anything that can communicate to emergency medical services. Finally, this is a team sport. So even though you're getting in the water with a buddy or a dive team, you should also have 
some sort of check-in system with somebody who's going to be on land. We could call them dry buddies. These people should know where you're going, what times you're getting into the water and out of the water, and what your dive plan is going to be. If you don't check in when you say you're going to check in, they can be the lead in the search and recovery just in case you get lost or hurt during your dives. And now a word from our sponsor, Eco Roots. Have you guys tried this stuff? all natural chapstick in a biodegradable container. Like what? If you guys have seen anything from us in the last few weeks, you've probably noticed that I am obsessed, obsessed with Eco Roots. It's a really awesome US-based company that sells super high quality plastic free items like chapstick, deodorant, toothpaste, dish soap. I mean, they have a ton of stuff. If you want to take your plastic free journey seriously, I have a link in the description below and the first comment. You can check out their store and start making less of an impact on the environment by spending money with companies who give a damn about this planet. All right, so that about does it, guys. Are we ready to go shore diving? Hope so. If you like this video, give it a big old thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our future videos. If you have questions about shore diving, make sure you hit me up in the comments below and let me know what else you guys wanna learn from us at Asul Unlimited. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.